two things I don't like, technology and spelling. Okay, so <laughs> with that, it looks to its left and it says, I need four, it looks to its right and says four, I can't. So what does it do? It shares. It's the absolute best sharing atom on the periodic table. Huh. Now that's interesting, because all those molecules up there are made with carbon scaffolding. Maybe there's a reason that we're built out of carbon through that process of sharing of electrons. But here's the deal. That doesn't explain it. So if you want to see the real periodic table, you want to see the real periodic table? Probably, I don't know how many people have seen it. I think you've seen it. It looks, yeah, it looks completely nothing like that, does it? Okay, you ready for it? Drum roll, please. It looks like that. Ooh, I like that, cool. That's the true periodic table. That's it. That's what should be in the back of your textbook. But it's not, that is. So I have to unteach that so that this makes sense. Because notice where carbon sits on this. This is really pretty trick. Carbon sits right there. Purple, being a robe, nobility, is here. Here are the neon, uh, the noble gases, okay? So carbon sits here and says, man, I have to gain one, two, three, four to look noble, or I have to lose one, two, three, four to look noble. So you can see that carbon sits down in that well, and it literally looks up to its left and its right and says, can't do it. So what it does is it puts its four hands out, and it says, I'll share. And so it shares. It has four hands, not two. Okay? And so when we see this, and we begin to understand how this builds, chemistry to me becomes, again, that exciting window that we can begin to see, oh, okay, nitrogen always wants three bonds. And you can see that. One, two, three. Oxygen always wants two bonds. One, two. Carbon always wants four bonds. That carbon has one, two, three, four. It's applied, I'll explain that later. That carbon has four bonds. So here's the deal. This is a Lego kit. Carbon's the four piece. Nitrogen's the three piece. Oxygen's the two piece. Hydrogen's the one piece. And with that Lego kit, literally, there's an infinite number of combinations of possibilities. Wow. Then why specifically do we have things like glucose in our system that are very, very highly structured into C6, H12O6? We're going to explore that. Why is it that penicillin does what it does and it being a beta-lactam opening up and binding to the bacteria cell wall? We're going to explore that. How is it that we bring together 20 amino acids to make up all life, from fungi all the way up to human? 20 amino acids, that's it. 20 building blocks to make all life. All from carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, hydrogen, and for those who have to throw a little sulfur, okay? That's it. So when I try to teach chemistry, I try to teach it in a way that we're not just gonna be bogged down in the minutia of, again, exciting things like redox, and, and we'll save that for general chemistry, right? The, your favorite thermodynamics uh, chapter, you love that. The whole class groaned in that chapter. Thermodynamics, why heat moves from one body to the other, right? Such exciting topics. We're gonna be able to fly over and see some really amazing things, but it's gonna challenge you because this class does move fast and it does cover a lot of information, okay? Any questions so far? No? I know it's the first day. Kind of like that first date. You don't want to talk too much. You want to talk on, you know, it's got to kind of, kind of get that. Where, where is the right amount of talking? Okay. So, with that, let's go ahead and move on into something pretty special about this glorious atom called carbon. Carbon, again, has six protons or six electrons. Okay? So, how many in this course have not had a chemistry class? Okay, so quite a few. So, I'll, I'll, so I'll, I just don't want to. I don't want to overteach, but I don't want to underteach. Okay. So when we look at the when we look at the structure of the atom, all right, there's a couple things that come from the structure of the atom. We have these things called protons. Okay. So there's protons. 
you have neutrons, those, we, we're not going to deal. Uh, they're spelling, I'm telling you. Spelling E are mortal enemies. Is it N neutrons? No, E somewhere. N E U? There you go. <laughs> neutrons, and there's electrons. Okay? So, really, what we are talking about with that blue number up there is a the number of protons. That's really what it is. Okay, the atomic number. All right, that's what it is. The atomic number tells me how many protons. It also tells me how many electrons I have if the atom's in its ground state. And I'll explain that on Friday. All right, so those are two very important. It doesn't tell me how many neutrons I have. I have to go to the actual atomic weight to know how many neutrons I have. Because neutrons, as you, those of you who had chemistry, we'll talk about this again, there's isotopes. Okay, so there's carbon 12, carbon 13, carbon 14. Now, protons, okay, are positive. Neutrons are neutral. Electrons are negative. All right? So here's one of the crazy cool things about chemistry. Chemistry is the study of the movement of electrons. Where do electrons move? If I take something like um, dopamine here, and uh, yeah, dopamine. This nitrogen right here, and we'll learn this because we'll get into the valence shell electron pair of theory, so those of you who might know that as experts, we'll get into that. It has a big lone pair of electrons right there. So since chemistry is the movement of electrons, these electrons want to go somewhere. Okay? They want to go attack something positive. That's what we're going to be studying. So why is it that electrons want to go attack something? Well, think about this. If I have a body with two electrons, okay? Think about this. Electrons are what? What charge are they? They're negative. If these electrons decide to move to one side or the other, What just happened to that body? What is it? It became more negative. This side became more negative. And what happened to that side? Oh, wait, how, how, how does that work? Follow me. This is really important. That's the heart and soul of chemistry right there. Electrons are something. When the electrons move away, they leave in their wake a positive. We call this polar. Think of the North Pole and the South Pole. They're two, two different poles, okay? So that tells me these electrons are gonna want to go find something positive. One of the ways I like to teach this is, is this. Electrons are something. When they move away, they leave in their absence positive. Okay? So, in science, we typically don't quantify cold. We quantify heat. Why? Heat is motion. Okay, it's matter in motion. When the motion stops, well, its default is cold. Think of it this way. We also don't quantify darkness. I have a 100 watt bulb of darkness. Makes no sense. We don't think of it that way. Light is something. Light is photons. Take the photons away, their absence is darkness. Does that make sense? Likewise, electrons are something. They're particles. So when they move, they bring their negativity with them, and in their way, just like cold, just like dark, they leave positive. Isn't that kind of interesting? And this is what we're going to say. Hey, by the way, this is exactly how the whole dynamic of sin works. Isn't that interesting? Sin is the absence of the presence of Jesus. That's what it is. So willingly choosing my own thing over his. 
So sin is when I do my own thing, not his thing. He is someone. When I'm following him, I'm doing his way. When I don't, there's a vacuum. That's called sin and death. It's kind of an interesting. We see that modeled in science. We see it modeled in the electron positive world. We see it in the light dark. We see it in the heat cold world. Okay, we see that through the lens of science. Now, why do I go into that? Because electrons are in special places. That's what we're going to build on. What are electrons? Well, electrons are these little tiny particles. Okay, they're negative little tiny particles. And typically we think of the, the Bohr atom as kind of the correct one. And so if I'm going to draw something like this, I have the neutrons and the protons here, and then I have these little electrons buzzing around out here. All right? But there's a, there's a kind of a funny picture that looks something like this. Some of you might have seen it. It's typically the, the, the symbol of the atom. Have you ever seen that? It's completely wrong. They, they don't do that. Electrons are really kind of creepy. They, 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 they're here, and then they're not here, and they're over here. And then they're not here, and then they're back over here. And then they're not here, and then they're here. They, they don't orbit like the moon does the Earth. They're in these weird energy levels that we call <coughs> quanta shells. Now that gets into a little bit of PCAM, but we're going to go into it, okay? So here's the way this works. And then we're going to stop with this, because I want to pick this up on, on Friday. And we're going to understand nobility, which is so cool. Why are the noble gases so special? Well, we're going to answer that. Okay, so here we go. The electrons have to go somewhere. If I'm going to count from 1 to 118 electrons, where do they go? Where are they? Well, they're in different energy levels around the nucleus. So when I look up there, here's the way we typically think of this. We think of it as a level of basically little boxes. And again, if you've had chemistry, this is somewhat familiar. Yeah, it's cool. Okay? So here's the way we think of the electrons, where the electrons are. Right? If I'm going to count, thankfully in this class, we're only going to count from 1 to 10. We're not going, we're not going to go farther than that. Uh, we might do a little bit of a sodium, magnesium, potassium, calcium, because they're so important within, within the body as far as um, certain enzymes need those, but we'll, we'll get to that in the biochemistry section. So here's the way this works. This is what we call N equals 1. This is called N equals 2. These are principal quantum numbers. Three. Okay? Now, what you need to know about these boxes, each of these little boxes is an orbital. Okay? Hold two electrons. Okay, you just have to know that. And there's reasons for that. Pauli exclusion principle, Hun's rule. We can get into a little bit more gory than we do in, in, in general chemistry. But for us, we should sure remember that each of these boxes represents an orbital, and each of those orbitals can hold two electrons. That's it. You just have to memorize that. Box equals orbital. Each orbital holds two electrons. With that, you can now construct a building understanding of the periodic table. So watch. I'm going to do it for you, and then we'll call it a day. Here's what it looks like. You ready? Periodic table. Hydrogen. <laughs> Helium. Lithium. Beryllium. Boron. Carbon. Oh, carbon. Nitrogen. Oxygen. Fluorine. And neon. Huh. <clears throat> what just happened with neon? What did it do? What's neon have that fluorine didn't have? Filled up the shell. Filled up this n equals 2 thing, right? Yes. Huh. Yeah. Notice, fluorine is missing one. Well, what does fluorine really, really want? That electron. To look noble, right? Well, not that violated. Not that violated. Sorry. Right. It really wants to look noble. Huh, that's interesting. Well, now go way over there to number 11. Uh-oh. I only could put one up here. So what's sodium say? Oh, man. What do I want to look like? 
Oh, like this. So somebody says, man, I'd really like to give up an electron. Isn't that cool? Yeah, that's really cool. Because that explains why it is that we have these things called metals <laughs> and non-metals. And that's where we'll pick it up on Friday. Okay? Have a great day. See you guys then. Jack, it's going to be an awesome semester, man.